morning everybody hey mark boswell from boswell emergency medical education technology hey how y'all doing um i'm on my way home this morning and i got a facebook question on the business page last night with someone wanting a little more info on the whole right-sided heart failure thing um in the classes we do we do spend a few minutes probably 15 or 20 minutes talking about right-sided heart failure and uh some hemodynamics uh, uh, concepts, things like that. So I thought I'd just speak for a moment about that while I had a few minutes on the way home. So on the CEN exam and the knowledge base, it is important to know about the right-sided MI or the right-sided heart attack and why is this important. Uh, we go over this in class. Um, it has to. It all goes back to what we call Starling's Law and Starling's Law has to do with uh, stretchability or a more precise term is distensibility of a stretchable container. In the case of the heart, we're talking about the right ventricle. The right ventricle has to stretch a certain amount to get a maximal ejection. Now, where does that blood go from the right ventricle? It goes to the lungs. And then, of course, from the lungs back to the left side, and the left side of the heart pumps it out to the systemic circulation, giving us our blood pressure. So it all starts with the right ventricle. If that right ventricle is affected and cannot pump effectively, we're going to get decreased cardiac output on the left side because we're not getting the blood through the lungs and back to the heart. So with the right side MI, and a damaged heart wall or a right ventricular heart wall it loses that pumping capacity because it's damaged and hence we also lose that stretch reflex so when a, we have a patient who's at a right side mi or a right ventricular mi this patient is going to present usually profoundly hypotensive low blood pressure because they're not able to maintain a cvp to perfuse through the lungs and then back to the left side of the heart so our treatment for right side MI, well, first of all, it's important to identify this because the treatments will be different versus the typical left sided, which is gonna be most of your uh, acute MI patterns. About a third of um, your STEMIs are gonna involve the right ventricle to a degree or not, and it has to do with how far down the LAD, the left anterior descending coronary has been obstructed or thrombosed. So about a third of the time, there's enough of involvement of the right ventricle also. Now, for most patients, when they've had that big STEMI, that traditional MI, if you will, we're more worried about trying to, to salvage the heart, get into the cath lab, etc., and manage that presentation. It does not always reflect onto the right side of the heart. Granted, I told you about a third of the um, left side MIs or the normal STEMIs are going to have a right side involvement also. If our patient is not responding to our traditional care, MONA, morphine, oxygen, nitro, um, with their, when they present with their MI, we need to consider some of the possibilities. And the right side MI or the right ventricular involvement needs to be considered as well because the treatment is going to be different. How do we, first of all, how are we going to tell the right side is involved? Well, we're going to see our STEMI probably on our 12 lead EKG. Our standard 12 lead EKG should show that STEMI pattern. If we're going to look for that right side, we need to look at the most reliable lead that's going to tell us the right side is involved. It's going to be V4. V4R on the right side EKG. Now, I'm not going to walk you through doing a right side EKG on this little video. However, you can look at it online on the other videos where I do actually do a lecture and we do go over it in class quite a bit extensively. But just know that your best lead to detect a right side involvement is V4R for the right side V4 lead. It will show an elevation there. Okay? So once you've confirmed the right side's involved, when you look at our patient, are they responding to our normal efforts that we normally do for STEMIs? If not, and we know the right side's involved, we need to back up, you know, pull the reins in, and say, how are we gonna specifically treat this right ventricle to maximize my cardiac output? Well, remember it goes back to that fluid status. It cannot squeeze enough to eject the blood to get it to the lungs. So the patient with the right side MI, if they're hypotensive, and that right side's been affected, we need to back off, or at least be very, very cautious with things that would decrease the preload. What is the preload? The preload is that filling pressure coming into the right side of the heart. Remember, I have to be able to stretch that right side to get a good squeeze. If I give this patient nitro, nitro is very likely to dump the preload and make my patient hypotensive, which makes it worse. So if I know the right side's involved, I need to back up, hold the, the nitro, hold the morphine. Morphine has preload reducing capacity also. And we need to give this patient a fluid bolus. We need to try and fill that tank up. We need to try and stretch that right ventricle to get a good ejection, to get blood to the lungs, through the pulmonary circuit, and back to the left side. Hence, a good blood pressure. Remember, the key here is gonna be perfusing those coronaries. Those coronaries do not perfuse until the blood's back in the heart, because the coronaries come back, come off of the 
aorta. So I have to get blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, to the aorta, and then out the coronaries to nourish that dying or that damaged heart muscle, okay? So the, what's the take home for all this? A couple things. Right side MIs are important. They're missed about a, th they're overlooked about a third of the time because they're concurrent with the normal STEMIs. Number two, right side MI, the right ventricle plays an integral role in pumping that blood to the heart, to the lungs, and then back to the left side of the heart. You lose that right ventricle, you lose your cardiac output. Number three, the concept of preload. Preload is the blood coming into the right ventricle through the inferior vena cava, filling that pressure into the right side of the heart to get a good ejection. We need to manage the preload. How do we do that? Number one, subsection one, we be cautious or we hold nitro and morphine because they're preload reducers. Next subheading, we're gonna try a fluid bolus instead, okay? And the final point for right side MIs, how are you gonna detect it? Your most specific lead on the EKG is gonna be that V4R, V4R, okay? So there's your right side MI, your right ventricle, how it plays a role, how it needs to stretch and fill up. Talk about Starling's Law. Hopefully that'll help you understand this a bit more. Again, I know I talk fast. I'm on the road this morning, heading home after work. Um, but maybe that'll help you and give you some guidelines. Uh, again, if not, you can pull up the cardiovascular emergency lecture on YouTube, uh, where you actually can watch the entire classroom lecture that we do live and follow through there. Maybe this will help give a little more insider information, um, try to explain it to you. All right. Um, got a class coming up this weekend. Going to be getting ready for it today. Look forward to seeing some of you guys there. And uh, we'll be in town um, Saturday and Sunday. And I'm um, going to give you another kick-ass class. Oops, did I just say that? My bad. Um, but anyways, looking forward to it. Um, Y'all stay safe. It's cold here in South Carolina. I'm going to go get inside here in a few minutes and warm up. And I will talk to you guys later. Mark Boswell, Boswell Emergency Medical Education Technology. Come see us on the web at www passthecen.com that's new web address by the way passthecen.com that'll take you to all the resources you need classes books videos etc and i will see you there and follow us on facebook out